scenario version. This is the one that has the three different decks and one of the sides is open so you can actually see into the ship. As you can see, I've got a pretty good start for part one. I want to give a very brief overview of what to expect in this series. The kit that I have comes with three manuals. You need for sure the first two. That will give you a completed ship and then there's a small third part gives you some extra characters and different uh, extras for the ship that aren't really necessary but you can purchase it. It is a separate purchase. What you're interested in are the first two and each booklet is called a pole. So this is the first pole. It's the larger image and that's one I've started with in part one. Later on we'll get to pole two. As you follow along you'll see where I go through the manual. I'll try to do this as if uh, you're a beginner like I am, although I'm, I'm an intermediate be beginner at this point. Uh, this is my third black pearl to construct. By far, this is the best version I've ever had. Let me show you how I got to this point. I'm going to approach this build as if anyone watching is a new builder. This is one of the first kits they've done, especially on this large of a scale. So I'm going for parts one and two and putting them together. And what I'll do is I'll mention just one time and then I won't repeat it the rest of the video series. But the front of this, it's hard to see where you punch this out. But if you turn the sheet over, you can see the little marks that need to be cut to release that piece. Another one time mention on pretty much every part when you remove it, you'll want to take a small file and any of these little nubs you'll want to file off. You'll want to start right off the bat being a little bit of a perfectionist and that means getting part one and two glued together and you need a very flat surface because you want it exactly flat and exactly flush. Clamp the piece, it's glued and it's on a flat surface important step number one. There's a few things that experience has taught me and here's two important ones. First of all, the manual does not have numbered pages. That wouldn't be a problem except sometimes you have to pull this back to see the instructions and I've even taken this off or if you dropped it and they came apart because this just slides off. So I went ahead and numbered the pages. Next, I always look ahead and way into the instructions, specifically on page 24, and here I just pulled this apart like I had mentioned. You're going to bevel three pieces, and they're at the front of the ship. There's actually lines here to give you an idea of what to bevel off, and that's because the planking is going to curve here. So what I do is I pre-bevel that, and I've got a, a, a sanding machine way over here that I will use to just pre-bevel that some. I'll do the final work with a file but I want to get a good start on it instead of when it's already assembled. You can see that I have all these uh, support members in place and it is important this is the bow of the ship so if I'm looking straight onto the bow, the front of the ship, these raised parts are to my right. That's important and these numbers are not necessarily important because on some they face forward, some are on the left, some are on the back side. So you can't rely on that except for the numerical order. It does go 1 through 16, I think. The next critical part, once you get some of these ribs in place, is uh, parts 17 and 18. 17 has a little angle piece here. 18 is the rear with this notch and that's what gives the three layer thickness. Then 19, there's only one place that it'll fit and it's right pretty much center. And for reference, none of these parts are glued as of yet. I try not to force anything and I have filed some of the edges down a bit. I've also been known to take this very lightweight 
plastic tip hammer and tap things. And you can just push these down into place with your hand. It should be snug but not so tight that you can't get it to go down. There's the one it was caught on. So those should be flush right with the bottom of the ship. At this point in the instructions, it gives you an option of using CA glue or wood glue, and it just says that the wood glue takes longer to dry. I'm going to test fit this lower deck before I do any gluing. This is pretty stable, and I want the ability to be flexible slightly, and again, this is all pretty snug, so I'm going to move forward. You can make your own decision on that. Early on, you're going to need to make some decisions on how you're going to color the ship, whether you're going to paint it or stain it. I always use stain, but this time I wanted to bring out the natural color of the walnut. So for a lot of the surfaces, I'm using Minwax Tongue Oil. And you just put that on, let it sit 5 to 10 minutes, wipe it off, let it dry 24 hours, come back and do another coat. So this has one coat on it and I just really like the way that it looks. And I've not used any adhesives yet. You can see I've started doing stain because I think some of these uh, framing pieces will show and so I've gone ahead and stained those. I've given this one coat of the tongue oil. I will do some glue work shortly. I'll put some weight on this floor and glue it down on the bottom a little bit. Something else you may or may not have noticed that I've done, i pre-drilled holes for electrical wiring. I've actually done that on both sides. The instructions verbally mentions you could drill holes or it also says you could cut notches out of these ribs. I didn't want the notches, so I'm going with the holes. And wiring has got to be thought of early on also. The instructions give you the option, they say if you want these planks to be deeper, to take a pen knife or something similar and run it along the, the line, make it deeper so it's darker. I started to do it, it's very time consuming, so I am just going to leave this as is. I'm pr very happy with it. You can see the lines that are there, and this deck, it's pretty deep in the ship and you're not going to see a lot of it anyway. Now there's an another one up the middle deck and I may do it in that one I may not. This framing is all out of placard A, it's black walnut because this is the open side of the ship so they could show. So I'm going to pre-stain these and then they'll fit right in this section here. If you're anything like me and after you took this part out of its holder and now you've gotten confused as to which part is number uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just simply go back and put them back in the holder that they started out in. And now you can identify which ones they are. Helpful hint number one. I've got the lowest deck in place. It is glued. It sat overnight. I had it clamped down as tight as I could get it and it's in position now and here you can clearly see here's 17, 19, and 18. So the sequence isn't in line but that is how they go and that's that bottom brace that makes your uh, centerpiece thicker and stronger. Now I'm ready to put in the ribs that come up on this side. Here I have one in position and then there'll be some sandwiches that go in here and hold that in place. Something important to know about those pieces is not all of them are necessarily marked. So you can see here is 6D and 7D. Each of these go on each side of that rib to hold that in place. Only one of them's marked. So, you know, just make sure that you don't get them mixed up, although by shape you can pretty much tell which ones they are. Another thing to be mindful of, 12D, even though one of them is marked, they're actually different shapes and that's so that they will fit correctly on the ship, so you have to get them in the right order. I'm starting with part 6D 
it goes on this very first one starting from the front of the ship and I'll just use wood glue on these. Do not get these out of order because they will fit on here out of order. So make sure that you keep the order correct. I've laid these out where they go. And they just pivot into place. Remember when I so cleverly said I was going to drill holes here for electrical wiring on both sides? Well, I kind of wasted my time because on this side, when I put in those braces to support this, I cover up the holes. So, I either need to drill some holes in those or just stick on the other side. Since I've only put two in place, I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and drill holes out in these pieces so I can still use part of it if I want to because I put a hole in the side so I can go back and forth. Anyway, just another helpful hint. For this task, I've invented the world's shortest pencil. And as an example, this is rib number 10, and I can reach in there and draw that little circle or at least kind of mark where it is. Yeah. Now I can drill that out. I've got the bones, as I call them, or the ribs assembled. I've got the weak side. What would that be? Starboard side? Uh, all the bracing in place, glued, and I'm going to let that set for 24 hours. During that time, I will also give another coat of tongue oil on this part of this deck. When you get to, uh, well, what I marked is page 14, but it's photo 27. It shows these pieces, which are walnut, in place, but the numerical where it shows you install it is the lower photograph here. They're all on this placard B. These are nice and thick. Again, the black walnut. So I'm going to pre-stain these a darker color. If you're interested in knowing, pretty much all the ships that I've done, I've used the um, semi-transparent red mahogany number 225 made by Minwax. Let me get those stained and put in place. Right now I've flipped the ship upside down and I've attached the keel. And obviously you can see where rubber bands come in handy. The keel is just slightly thicker than the wood that it mounts on. So the instructions uh, do indicate that you should sand that down so it's the same thickness. I've decided to go ahead and put it on and then sand it from there. Some of you may be wondering why I stained this and now I said I'm going to sand it. And I always pre-stain if I'm going to glue something because glue tends to get into the wood and then when you go back and try and stain it, it will not hold the stain. So a lot of times I will stain, sand, and then re-stain. So that's the reason if you were curious. That concludes part one of the Black Pearl, all scenario version. And so far it's gone smoothly. I have not had any real challenges. Anything I came up with was minor. I don't have anything to, to highlight as far as any major concerns. I'll be back soon with part two of building the Black Pearl.